What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Trey Codes. As always, my name is Trey, and today I'm here to give you more content related to Flutter and Firebase, okay? So specifically what I wanna talk about today is a way that you can automate the process of different functions within your app. And how do you automate that? Well, of course you can figure out ways to do it within the app itself, but you can do it in a cloud, which makes it even more easy and it works seamlessly all the time. The way you would do that is by creating a cloud scheduler function. But let me first preface this with what is a cloud function? So a cloud function is essentially a function that works in the cloud um, whenever you need it to execute for whatever reason. You might have a cloud function that sends push notifications or sends users to a payment page using the Stripe API, or it may be some type of a cloud function that does an interaction with a database like MongoDB. So cloud functions are a way that you can pretty much add some functionality in the back end for whatever app you're working on and it makes it very easy for your app. A cloud schedule function is those same cloud functions, but now they work at a specified time, right? And so it's essentially a cron job. And what that means is you can automate the process by not having to actually call the cloud function, but instead the cloud function calls itself whenever that time is specified. And you can modify these increments of time to whatever you need them to be. You can run these cloud functions every day, every week, uh, every hour, every Friday at 5 p.m., or you can even run them every minute. And that's exactly what we're gonna to do today. I'm going to create a cloud scheduler function that runs every minute, and then we're going to create a Flutter app that is going to be interacting with the data that's been updated from that cloud scheduler function. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have a Firebase project already created, and I have one right here for my demos project. Now keep in mind that you don't need to create a Firebase project specifically. You really just need uh, to create a project for to use the Google Cloud Functions console. So you can actually use the console separately from this, but the cool thing with Firebase projects is when you create a Firebase project, it automatically syncs with those Cloud Functions in the console. So you could either use the native Google Cloud Functions console or you could use Firebase. Since I work with Firebase all the time, I figured it'd be good just to use this for the example. So just keep in mind that you can use either or, but for this example, I'll be using Firebase. Then if we go over to functions, we can see that we have just a couple functions from some other projects that I was working on, but this is essentially where we will be putting that cloud function, that cloud scheduler function, this is where we will be putting it at, all right? So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and get Node installed as well as the Firebase CLI, which will allow us to deploy our cloud function to the cloud. All right, like I said, we need to go ahead and install Node.js. This is a JavaScript run, a JavaScript runtime environment, and this is where we will be creating our cloud functions. So our cloud functions essentially need this to, to work in the server. Uh, so you go over to nodejs.org, download the latest version. Pretty simple to set up. So I already have it set up, so I'm gonna skip that step. But once you have that, you'll want to come over to your actual uh, project, your Firebase project. And I'm in the root directory here. And now what we wanna do is we wanna install the Firebase CLI. This is going to give us the tools that we need to make this function come to life. So I'm going to run sudo uh, npm install dash g firebase tools. All right. Now it's going to fetch all the packages, no modules, all that good stuff uh, for us to use for this project. Make sure you throw sudo on there because it's most likely going to ask for permission to do this installation. All right, great. We have everything we need. Now what we need to do is create a web directory where we will put our Firebase functions in and we'll go ahead and do that right now. All right, now we need to go ahead and initialize Firebase functions. And the way that we do that is first, I like to create a web directory. The reason I do that is because there's already an Android and iOS directory with a Flutter project. So I just create the web directory to encompass anything that we would need on the website, including JavaScript functions for our cloud. So with that directory created, we're going to CD into that and run the command Firebase init functions. All right, so first it's gonna prompt us, do you want to use an existing project, create a new one, add Firebase to an existing Google Cloud Platform project, don't set up a default project. We're gonna select use an existing project and we're gonna use that demos project 
that I specified earlier. What language would you like to use to write cloud functions? I'm going to select JavaScript. You can use TypeScript if you want. Do you want to use ESLint to catch probable bugs and enforce style? I'm gonna put no because that linter is extremely strict. You almost have to have flawless code in order to push up a cloud function and I don't wanna deal with that today. So I'm gonna put no for that. Do you want to install dependencies with NPM now? We'll hit yes. All right, and now it's gonna go ahead and fetch all the modules and packages and everything that we need to use Firebase functions. All right, so with everything installed, Firebase initialization complete, we can go ahead and look in this web directory and we have the functions directory and we have our index.js file. This is where we will be adding our Google Cloud function to be pushed up to the server, okay? All right, so in order to save us a little bit of time, I went ahead and wrote out the cloud function already, um, but I'll just go ahead and explain what everything is in here. So within that index.js file, we have the functions import and the admin import. First thing we need to do is initialize our app. This allows us to actually make interactions with our Firebase project. Then we create our cloud function by uh, typing in exports, um, and then we create the name of our function. So this essentially says that my scheduled cloud function will be one of the functions that is going to be in our Google Cloud function um, lineup, essentially. So then we call functions.pubsub.schedule. This is where we actually specify the pattern of how often this cloud function is going to operate. You can come over to a website called crontab.guru and it lets you know what pattern you would need in order to create the time increment that you would want or how often you would want your function to run. So uh, if I select random right here, you'll see that 50 star eight star is at 12.05 in August. So this will only run once a year, right? So um, just keep in mind that that's, if you can come over here, if you wanna actually modify patterns and see what, what it would look like in order to specify it in your app. So since we're running a cloud function every minute, we're gonna add all five stars. That means it's gonna run every minute. Then we specify the time zone, America, New York, and then add the on run property right here. And so now everything in here is going to be executed every minute, all right? So just keep in mind that this is essentially the cloud function that we're working with. This right here is the scheduler function that's gonna execute that cloud function every minute. So what we're doing is I have a document in Firebase, um, a collection called CF data in the random document and then a property called coins. So what this cloud function is gonna do is, it's gonna update this coins property by five, five coins every minute, all right? In order to do that, uh, we get a reference to that document by calling uh, await admin.firestore.collection, specifying the collection and then the document, which is the ID of that document and then calling get. So this is the document right here. Then a little typo here. Then we need to convert that dot to JSON so that we can work with it. So we will call cfdata dot dot data. And then we need to update the amount of coins by five on that document. So we'll call cfdata dot 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 ref dot update, pass in the uh, key that we're gonna be updating, which is coins. And then we need to call admin dot firestore dot field value dot increment five. The reason you use this field value dot increment is because it will automatically add whatever value you specify to the already pre-existing value for that coins property. If we just passed in five right here, like if we just did this, then it would update the coins property to five every minute. And we don't want that. We want it to increase. We want it, we want it to increase by five every minute. So we'll call admin, we'll call the field value property right here and then just return null, all right? So that is our cloud function. Once we're done with that, we need to deploy it to the cloud. So we'll run, uh, we need to go into the functions directory and run Firebase, Firebase deploy dash dash only functions, uh, big typo, hold on, all right? So now it's deploying our function to the cloud for us. Would you like to proceed with deletion? No, this is just saying that I have a function that is not currently in there or some extra stuff. Um, it was found in my project, but it's not in my local source. So I don't wanna delete it, so I'll just hit no and continue with the deployment. As you can see, it says creating Node.js function, my schedule cloud function. Something to keep in mind is, I just noticed, we didn't use this data object because we don't need anything else on it. Um, but ideally, if, let's say you wanted to obtain that information to say, I don't know, get the property of someone's name and then modify it a little bit and then update that. So you could use that method to update their name. I had this in there just because I like to have access to the document already, but you don't need that right there. 
All right, it says project console deploy complete. If we come over to Firebase and check our functions, we should see my scheduled cloud function. All right, so now that the cloud function is done, let's hop over to the Flutter app and actually demonstrate what we need to do on the Flutter side to get this app running. Cool, now we're in the Flutter app, uh, the demo page more specifically, this is where we'll be actually coding the app. So keep in mind that in Firebase, I created that document right here on the CF data collection and we're updating that coins property by five coins every minute. As you can see, the coins amount is at 95, so that means ever since that cloud function was pushed up, it's been executing every minute, incrementing by five. So if I do the math right, that means it's been about 19 minutes since it's been pushed up, or 20 minutes to, to uh, be more accurate. All right, so if we come back over to the Flutter app, we need to create a reference to that document simply by calling Firebase Firestore.instance collection, specify the collection, which is CF data, and then the dot, which is the document ID. And then the only thing that we're doing here is since it is being updated every minute, we can create a stream builder and just listen for changes to that coins property, which we're doing right here. So we create a stream builder of type document snapshot. The stream is going to be that documents references snapshots. Then as always in the builder, we want to make sure that while that snapshot is waiting, then we'll just have a circular progress indicator of outside of that. We want to extract the data from that snapshot, which is that document itself, convert it to a map of string and a map of type string and data. So we have that right here in this data object. And then in the center of the page, we're just displaying text that says coins and then the amount of coins that they have, right? And we do that with this right here, okay? So that's all you need to do on the Flutter side. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate what that looks like in the Flutter app and you can watch the coins being updated every minute. Cool, so this is the Flutter app. As you can see right now, it's 8, 10 p.m. The amount of coins we have is 110. So once it strikes 8, 11, the coin should say 115. So I'm not gonna have you sit and wait in here. I would love to insert the little SpongeBob five hours later meme, but just know that this is gonna update in the next minute. One eternity later. All right, so it's 8, 11 now, and the amount of coins we have is 115. So the app and the cloud scheduler function is working exactly how it needs to for this demonstration. So with that said, that is how you can create cloud schedule functions for your app, all right? I do this in a few areas in a few of my apps. One of my apps, Critic, um, I used it whenever, no, not Critic, I'm sorry. There was an app called ScoreSquare, the one that I worked on, the sports betting app. Essentially what I did there is I wanted to reward users of the app with 50 free coins every Friday at 5 p.m. So I used a cloud scheduler function in order to execute that and handle all the logic on the back end. So as you can imagine, automating your process is super simple, super easy, and saves you a bunch of time. So if this video was helpful, as always, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think about cloud scheduling functions and let me know any examples of where you may have used this in your app, all right? I hope this video was helpful and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time, I'll talk to you later. Peace.